In these problems, I'm converting complex numbers from standard form to polar form. And notice that they're all fairly similar. It's all a 2 and a 3. And um, it's the signs that are different, and that's what's going to make a little bit of a difference for these um, values. So we're going to convert from standard to polar form. First thing I'm going to do is graph each of these. So for A, we have 2 plus 3i, and that's 2 on the real axis and 3 on the imaginary axis, so that's about there. 2 plus 3i, so that's A. And B is 2 minus 3i, so we'll go in the opposite direction for y. We're down there, there we go. And so this is b, and this is 2 minus 3i. And then in c, we have negative 2 plus 3i. So that's quadrant 2. And finally in d, we have negative 2 minus 3i. And there's about where we're talking. Negative 2 minus 3i. Okay, so I'm going to start with A. This is the simplest because it's quadrant 1. So I have 2 plus 3i, and I need to find r, and I need to find theta. So let's start with r. I'm going to square the 2 and square the 3, add them together and take the square root, and that gives me square root of 13. And then theta. So the tangent of theta is equal to the y value, which is 3, over the x value, which is 2. So what I need to do is find the tangent inverse of 3 halves. And I'll do that on the calculator. And that gives me theta equals, that's about 56.3 degrees. So I went with degrees, I rounded to one decimal place. I could have used radians, but I didn't. Um, so most of the time in my math lab, I think they'll be asking you for degrees for these problems, but you can go either way. Um, so let's see. So we've got r and we've got theta, so now I know that 2 plus 3i is equal to square root of 13 times cosine of 56.3 degrees plus i sine 56.3 degrees. Shift that over. There we go. So that's my first value. That's A. And now I can use this information to find the other three. So I'm going to go back to the previous screen. Okay, I just found that 2 plus 3i is equal to, roughly, because we rounded, um, the square root of 13 times the cosine of 56.3 degrees plus I sine 56.3 degrees. And I've got a little shorthand notation for cosine of an angle plus I sine of that same angle. We can just abbreviate to cis. And then when you write your final answer, you can expand it back out. So what does this tell me in terms of my diagram here? Well, it tells me that the length from 0, 0 to my point 2 plus 3i is the square root of 13. And it tells me that this angle here is 56.3 degrees. Now let's take a look at part b. So in b, I have 2 minus 3i, almost the same. And the r value is going to stay the same for all four of these values. 
So now I just need to know what angle are we talking about because that does change. So you can see here according to this diagram, of course that's the same distance. And now my question is, what is this angle? So obviously it's an angle in the fourth quadrant, it's quite large, but what I can tell is that the 56.3 that we had positive here, that's this angle right here, that's 56.3 here. So what do I do to find the large angle? I'll just subtract 56.3 from 360. I'll do that off to the side. And I get 303.7 degrees. And now I've got B. Now let's take a look at C. For C, I have negative 2 plus 3i. Now we're talking quadrant 2. And so again, what I'm going to do is look at what we call the reference angle, and that was the 56.3 degrees we got in quadrant 1. I cleaned up the graph a little bit. So if we know that we had 56.3 degrees here, then again, this will be also 56.3 degrees. So in this case, because we are in quadrant 2, I'm going to subtract 56.3 degrees from 180. So what I'm doing is I'm always trying to work from the x-axis and figure out what angle we're talking about. And remember, it has to be this angle here now that we're talking that we're talking about, which is obviously between 90 and 180 degrees. So if you get something that's not between 90 and 180, you know you need to go back and take another look. And when I do that subtraction, I get 123.7 degrees. And there we go. Went in red instead of blue. That's all right. And now for part D. Again, it's a 2 and a 3, just different signs now. So it's negative 2 minus 3i. And I know it's going to equal square root of 13, cis. And now to find my angle. All right. So this distance is the square root of 13, and the question is, let's clean this up a little bit, what is the angle from the positive x-axis all the way around to this line? So again, it has to be between 180 and 270. You get something else, check it out. Um, this is another 56.3 degrees past 180. So I'm going to take 180 plus 56.3 degrees. And what does that give me? Yep. And that is how you convert complex numbers from standard to polar form. So notice that you really need to concentrate on what quadrant you're in and then make sure that you're using your reference angle correctly. It's always going to be working from the x-axis, either the positive or the negative, depending on what quadrant you're in. But you're always working from the x-axis to try to figure out what angle it is you're talking about. And that's what we have for that video.